Biogeography is the study of the geographical distribution of organisms, and it's a very handy topic when talking about the evolutionary history of organisms. Biogeography not only provides great evidence of evolution, but it also provides pretty strong evidence to reject creationist ideas of a 6 to 10,000 year old Earth and Noachian flood. Aaron Ra gives an explanation of this in his video, How Zoology Disproves Noah's Flood, saying this. Many islands have species that exist only there and nowhere else. How would they distribute them back again? How would they get the dragons to Komodo, tortoises to Galapagos, the Tuatara back to New Zealand? This is the heart of biogeography. Organisms adapt to and evolve in certain biomes, and taking them away from those biomes could potentially kill them. For instance, polar bears and penguins could not survive in the Middle East in the same way elephants could not survive in Antarctica. Many aquatic organisms demand very specific salinity levels or temperatures, and slight variations in those would see the end of those populations. For instance, freshwater snails are very sensitive to salt water, and the orange-spotted filefish is very sensitive to warm water. According to National Geographic, quote, the animal went extinct in Japan during an episode of warmer ocean temperatures in 1988, close quote. Clearly, an inrush of water, salt or fresh, would have devastating impacts on all aquatic organisms, not just the ancient aquatic reptiles. While we're on the subject, where did all that water necessary for the global flood come from? According to the Bible, the water came from outer space. As said by Genesis 1-6 in the New International Version, quote, And God said, Let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. Close quote. So, God created the sky, or firmament, or vault, to separate waters on earth from waters above the sky, which is space. And, now that creationists have realized the absolute thermodynamic absurdity of trying to bring in enough water to cover Mount Everest, they have changed tactics. They say now that some mysterious hydrodynamic forces caused mountains to raise while the flood was happening. For reference, Mount Ararat, the mountain on which the Ark landed, is a volcano. Thus, the Ark must have landed on a forming volcano. Awkward. It was pointed out to me by popular YouTuber Apologia, linked to his channel in the description below, that creationists tend to think that the water from the global flood came from the fountains of the deep. If the water did come from underground, then where did it go? Some creationists posit that a mineral in Earth's mantle called ringwoodite is responsible for containing the water. The water seeped out of the mantle to produce the flood water and it drained back into the mantle afterwards. Water, however, cannot seep down into the Earth's mantle because the temperature of the crust exceeds the boiling point of water, meaning the water can only go one way, up. Back to biogeography. Let's look to marsupials. This is a clade of mammals where modern members only live naturally in North and South America and Australia. But why? What is the reason that marsupials live only in these areas, separated by a large ocean? The reason is that marsupials evolved originally on the supercontinent called Laurasia, comprised of North America, Europe, and Asia, before dispersing to Gondwana, comprised of South America, Africa, Madagascar, Antarctica, India, and Australia, as well as various islands and archipelagos like the Seychelles. In the story of Noah's Flood, the marsupials must have traveled directly from South America and Australia to Asia Minor and back to Australia and South America without leaving any fossils along the way. Looking at the fossils, however, we see that marsupials and their closest extinct relatives, collectively called metatherians, dispersed from the Middle Jurassic of China to North America to South America, across Antarctica, and then to Australia. We also see that marsupials went extinct in Laurasia until the Isthmus of Panama connected with South America, which allowed marsupials to reinvade Central and North America. This story, the fossils tell, is independently confirmed by genetics, which categorically disagrees with the Noachian story. For instance, a genetic bottleneck of the magnitude indicated by the global flood story would be clearly evident in the genomes of all organisms. However, none exists. Neither genetics nor the fossil record gives any credence to the flood story. Marsupials can teach us another lesson about biogeography. Both marsupials and monotremes live in Australasia, comprised mostly of New Zealand, Australia, and New Guinea. But they do not extend into Asia. Why not? 
If marsupials had to cross from the Middle East to Australia, then surely some evidence of kangaroos hopping across the desert, leaving fossils or coprolites, should exist. Instead, there is no evidence. Understand that once marsupials reached Australia, the continent had detached from both Pangaea and Gondwana, so they had no way to reach Asia. Today, we still find both monotremes and marsupials in Australasia, and we find Laurasia therian mammals in Asia, a division which has earned the name Wallace's Line after Alfred Russell Wallace. First, a lesson. Laurasia therians are mammals that evolved in Laurasia, hence the name. It includes cats, dogs, horses, rhinos, bats, shrews, etc. So, Laurasia therians live on one side of the line, mostly, and monotremes and marsupials live on the other side. If the flood story is true, why would Laurasia therians stop on one side of the line while monotremes and marsupials went to the other side? It makes no sense. Similarly, velvet worms and lungfish have a Gondwanan distribution, and snapping shrimp in the Caribbean experienced a split in their population due to the formation of the Isthmus of Panama. Now, snapping shrimp exist on both sides of the landmass and have undergone allopatric speciation in the years since. There was even a clade of extinct Laurasia therians called notoungulates that managed to survive on the isolated South America until it reconnected with North America. Once it did, the notoungulates were pushed to extinction by the incoming Laurasia therians. We could go on talking about the paleogeography of Native Americans, dinosaurs, Afrotherians, and many other groups, but the point has been made. Biogeography stands solely in support of evolution, not creationism. There is no reason for biogeography to exist if a Genesis creation or Noachian flood actually happened. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.